My name is Reda Ulamin. I'm an attorney and counselor at law and a member of the New York, Paris, and Casablanca bars. I'm also the founding president of Droit Justice, a Moroccan non-governmental organization aimed at establishing and promoting the rule of law in Morocco. Droit Justice is a Moroccan NGO that was established to help establish and promote the rule of law, human rights and democracy in Morocco, as well as legal reform. Our judiciary is problematic and is fraught with problems such as corruption, incompetency and lack of means. And I could quote many other examples of those flaws. And our job is to modestly attempt to fix those problems. The activities of Droit Justice has voluntarily been drafted widely to encompass as many activities as we can. That's why our mission statement talks about the promotion of the rule of law. Why is that? Because the problems of the Moroccan judiciary are so numerous that we need all kind of activities. Now I will give you some exa examples of some of the activities that we have conducted successfully so far. In the beginning, we have conducted a conf an annual conference on the state of the rule of law and civil liberties in Morocco. We then moved on to a series of mini conferences on the reform of criminal procedure in Morocco in partnership with the Moroccan uh, Association of Judges, the Club des Magistrats, which I salute, by the way. Uh, we also uh, conducted justice roadshows, who proved to be very successful. And the justice roadshows, once a month for about a year and a half now, have been delivering free legal advice to impoverished citizens throughout Morocco. We also have we have also have projects such as a legal aid for refugees, asylum seekers. We have another project uh, to combat underage marriage because, believe it or not, uh, females in Morocco in 2015 can still be married off by their families when they are as little as 12 or 13 or 14, which is unacceptable in a modern society. And we also have uh, a, a legal aid center to be funded by the World Bank. That is actually funded right now by the World Bank. And the, legal, the fixed legal aid center also provides free legal aid, free legal assistance, and court representation to uh, needy citizens uh, in the country. As to the development of the YGCs in the future, we contemplate a wide array of activities. Why? Because just like a high civil servant that the European Union once told me, operating in the area of legal reform in Morocco is tantamount to emptying an ocean with a glass. That shows you the magnitude of the task. Of course, we only have limited means and, and the task is too big. Therefore, we're going to prioritize and select uh, priority areas of the law, and we're going to work on those areas. I would like to give you today three, uh, three areas that need work and help badly. The first one is family law. To make a long story short, family law has known a good progress since 2004. We went to a situation where women has basically no rights. And when I say women, I also include children. Women and children had no, no rights uh, to uh, a situation where they have some rights. It is kind of a semi-satisfactory situation. And to be more precise, well, I'm talking here about matters pertaining to child support, child alimony, uh, divorce, uh, the rights to remarry, for a divorced woman, which she does not have today, 
otherwise she'll lose the custody of her children, and so forth and so forth. That's, for example, that's family law. Now, the second area, the second problematic area of the law is criminal law and criminal procedure. There is a consensus today that in Morocco, the current criminal law, the code of criminal law and the code of criminal procedure have to be amended urgently to put them in compliance with international standards. This is not a choice. This is not a favor that the government should do to us. But this is our, the obligations of the government of Morocco that it has pledged to and committed to through, uh, first, the New York Covenant on Civic and Political Rights, on the one hand, which guarantees those rights to citizens, and the Moroccan Constitution on the other uh, on the side. To give you an, a concrete example, it is not normal that if we take any freedom, for example, the freedom of speech, uh, the New York Convention tells you that you have a strong free right to freedom of speech. So does the Moroccan Constitution. It confirms that right. But I can quote you many articles of the Code of Criminal Law that will send you to jail if you speak freely or especially in, in certain topics. So in law, we said that we have to put a lower law in compliance to a higher law. These three areas of the law that I mentioned, i.e. criminal law, family law, and civil liberties, are just an example of uh, areas that need to be reformed in Moroccan law. I would say safely that all areas of the law need to be reformed, whether it's commercial law, civil law, administrative law, and every traffic laws, and every possible law in Morocco needs to be both amended and maybe more importantly, we should look at the enforcement of the laws and give our authorities and our law enforcement the means and the motivation to do that. We have to do this, it's not a choice, it's not a luxury. We have to do it if we want to continue in the transition to democracy, human rights and the rule of law that we have started engaging, engaging into.